Y'all, are y'all hot yet? Less is shake, less you got a jacket on. It's cold in here, boy. Amen. Feels good in here. I always like it wet less if we had to turn this into a meat hanger, we could. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to start off tonight with a word of prayer. Um, any prayer requests that um, we want, I threw out a few on the prayer chain earlier. We want to remember Karen. She's going tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Am I right, Terry? 10.45. And so um, she said, Andy, probably the most dangerous thing will be riding over there with Terry. And uh, so we want to remember that her and our prayers and pray that her surgery goes well and they got to stay over in Evansville um, to get checked back out on Friday morning. So we want to remember her. Also, I was just talking to Sister Rhonda. She's going, she has a very similar problem. She's going to the eye retina. Institute tomorrow in St. Louis, so we want to remember her as well. Um, Miss Carol Kohler, we want to continue to remember her. She's been having a lot of trouble each day, just catching her breath. Um, and then um, Thurman's, uh, they have COVID. They're both doing well, but uh, they said to definitely lift them up to the Lord in prayers. And um, yes, Jeff Allstat, that's who I also I was trying to think of. Jeff Allstat, we want to remember him in our prayers. White Reed. And so we want to remember Camp Jericho. Um, we have about 45 kids down there. And a lot of our church people are down there working, thankful for them and the work they're doing. So we want to remember them in our prayers. And uh, we'll keep going. Jeffy? Okay, remember. Naomi Hawk. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then uh, we're going to turn it over to our Mexico mission team tonight. They're going to share um, the, st the st <laughs> andale, andale. They're going to share the stories and tales and struggles, right, Sharon, of Mexico. All right. Heavenly Father, we lift up these requests to you tonight. God, you know every single situation and every single circumstance. And so, Lord, we just intercede for them tonight, and we pray, dear God, that, that you'd be with each and every one of those situations. Um, Lord, we pray uh, specifically uh, for the appointments and surgeries coming up. We thank you, Karen. We pray, dear God, a touch upon her to, uh, tomorrow as she has this procedure done. Pray that it go without flaw. Pray be with Sister Rhonda as well. Uh, Lord, we pray for Carol Kohler tonight. We lift her up and just pray for her lungs. I pray, dear God, Lord, for Jeff Allstadt. I pray, God, that you touch him in the situation he's in. I pray, dear Lord, for um, all those who are sick and afflicted, battling different struggles. Pray for the Thurmans. Pray, God, you'd be with them, touch them. Um, and, Lord, we pray for Camp Jericho. Pray, God, we continue to have a good week down there. Pray uh, good health down there. Um, and, uh, Lord, you continue to be with the kids and all the workers. And, Lord, we just love you and we thank you. Thank you for this team that went and served in Mexico. And we pray, dear God, Lord, that uh, you would uh, use them to minister to us, to share with what you did down there through them and uh, around them during their time in Mexico. We just love you. Be with us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, Amen. Amen. You want to start off with a slideshow? All right, so we're going to go ahead and kick off this slideshow. I will apologize. They sent me somewhere around 10 million pictures. And um, I thought it would be a lot easier to put together a slideshow than it was, and it wasn't. And so I managed to get one together. It may not be all of your pictures, but it's some. All right, so here we go. When we're done, you guys just come up and share. There's no music to this at all.
Hello? So um, from the 11th of June till the 18th of June, we went down to Jerez, De Salinas, Zacatecas, Mexico. Uh, we flew into Zacatecas City, uh, and then Ben picked us up, and we drove approximately 40 miles to uh, Jerez. And the best way I can explain it is uh, Zacatecas City is a, um, it's a vacation destination for the Mexicans. Um, and then Jerez is kind of like the, the New Orleans of the United States of America. Um, so a lot of, a lot of people go down, uh, and spend time, uh, doing their thing down in, in Jerez. Um, so there's five of us. So for, number one, we gotta watch our time. So help me on that. Um, but I'm gonna kind of just share what, what I experienced and, and, that I was involved in and then, um, each of the ladies will share their what's on their heart. So when we, when this first came up about going and taking this trip, as you all know, Ben's been coming here for quite a while. Uh, ben and Ben and Deanna and their kids have been in Terry and my life for about uh, 16 years or so. Um, we met him in Del Rio, Texas, and uh, Del Rio actually is about 570 miles from Jerez. So, and Ben will drive that to Del Rio periodically. So, um, uh, so it kind of gives you a little bit of a geographical where it's located at. Um, so we went down there and, uh, uh, unbeknownst to us, the five of us, um, we found out that we were the senior citizen group. As you can see, uh, Amy put on their uh, seniors 2022. And so, um, um, so my heart was, uh, as Ben comes here, Brother Roland, your name was mentioned many times, asking about you and different things. So those that know Ben, when you pray with Ben, you, if you're holding his hand, the next thing you're doing, you're doing this. Uh, he's, I mean, he, uh, he, he said on 180. And so it was, a, it was an adjustment for, I'm sure for, for for him to have five senior citizens come coming down and uh and and uh using using us because it was a you know he just had to adjust for us but I think it was a good thing honestly for him as well so uh we stayed at Ben and, and Deanna's home um and a very nice home um but when and we and we've been corresponding for quite a while, but you don't go down there and observe. You go down and participate. And so uh, we get there on Saturday night, and uh, Sunday morning I get to preach, or I'll call speak, uh, at, at the church. Uh, then Monday night was the feeding, uh, uh, serve the outreach that night, and uh, we did. I got to uh, minister with the, to the men. And the ladies got to do a lot of things with the kids and the women. They'll talk about that. Wednesday, one of the pictures, or I'm sorry, Tuesday, we went out to a, a home just outside of uh, Jerez to, a, to a, a house and had house church there that night. And I believe Amy shared that night, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then Wednesday, we went up into the mountains to a, to a mission church uh, that evening and, and had service. And Sharon spoke that night. And uh, then Thursday, we went way up into the mountains, about two and a half hour drive. And we we went to um, uh, a, a, there's a court. They call it the court. And it's behind the Catholic Church. And that's where Terry, my wife, got to share. And, and they've started an outreach there. And um, so she shared. And, uh, and we went to another house. Kathy shared. And then we, then the the last service, we were like an hour and a half late to to get to that last service, and uh, so I mean it was a um, a full full trip. Uh, Friday was just a tourist type thing. We went back to Zacatecas City and and we did some sightseeing, but I shared a couple of people. We got back on Saturday, and it literally took me until Friday of the next week to recover. And uh, not only, I know it was the physical, but it was the spiritual, the emotional, and a lot of things that, you know, went on there. So, um, and there's a lot more I can share on that, and I don't want to drag it out. But as far as what I did personally, I got to share on Sunday morning, and I got to preach again on Thursday night. 
uh, up in the mountains. And then we met with the men on uh, Sunday night and Monday night at uh, the facilities there that, that Ben has at his church, and uh, which was really, that's kind of where my heart is. And uh, we talked about the uh, uh, commandments of Christ. And so I, the first night I had like four guys there, four men, and besides Ben, and uh, so we talked about repentance. And then I had them share their testimony. Well, come to find out, these guys, they never really shared their testimony with each other, so they really didn't, you know, again, culture is different, I guess, and even here, you know, men have a hard time, you know, pulling down the walls and talking. But So we did that on um, Sunday night, and then the next night we ended up having, we had like eight guys that next night and had some younger guys come in, and we did, we did the same thing as far as having them share testimony. Um, as far as the physical, uh, the we had a beautiful place to stay. Uh, those kind of things, you know. I mean, I had some questions already come in about how was it. I mean, it, it, it's not the United States, but it, but it's not Acuna either. I mean, it's as far as modernization, it was that that kind of thing. Um, We've seen people come to the Lord, seen people get healed, uh, but I think I think the group will all attest that really, for us to go and to just to be used and really to be stretched and do things. I'm not a preacher; the pastor's right there, but uh, he's going to go next year. So no, anyhow. But you know, uh, my last thing I'll get out and let's. Uh, I think Terry's coming up next, or somebody's coming up next. Is you know, when, when Andy shared Sunday about, uh, and what the kids at youth went, what youth camp about making room for God, and you ask about how many people had been to youth camp, uh, had been to the Fuge, I was wondering how many people had been to church camp. I, I went to church camp several times, you know, as a kid. But there's something, and I don't know where it is in, with life, that, uh, you know, opportunities like this, I think are, are vital for us to go and step out and do. And honestly, if us five can do it, it's, you know, anybody can. So anyhow, I'll be around and go at questions and there's so much I'm going through my head, but whoever's next, come on up. Good evening. I just want to start with saying a big thank you to everyone here at White Ash who gave financially, who prayed for us. We could feel your prayers. They meant everything. And it wasn't just us going. It was all of you going on this trip. Um, this was a hard one for me, <laughs> very hard. It's hard to be up here right now. Um, but for a very long time now, I'd been praying, Lord, I want my life to count for the kingdom. I felt as a youth, I just kind of spent too much time on myself, you know, was too inward focused, and I really wanted to finish this race well. And I'm not saying you have to do this kind of thing to live for the kingdom, but the door opened, and I didn't have a reason t to not walk through it, even though I was scared to death to do it. So I, I thought, well, fear is not a reason to not go, so I'm going. But um, it stretched me in ways I've probably never been stretched before. Um, like John shared, everyone was uh, required to take a turn to lead a devotion, and that was with our group and with Ben's family. And there were a couple times, I think, there were some young kids that were friends that were there. That was every morning at 8.30 in the morning we met for devotions. And then everyone was required to what Ben called preached, which I was thinking in my head, okay, I'm going to share with a small group of ladies around in their church, and it ended up being more like preaching up in the mountains with a, a larger group of people that weren't part of his church. So that was kind of an adjustment for me when I got there. That was more than what I had expected. Um, I learned that you have to be prepared, but you have to be flexible, because when we got there, Sharon was heading up the children's ministry because <laughs> that's what she does. And when we got there, uh, she got tied up with the sewing classes. So Amy and I, and I think Kathy also ended up doing a lot with the kids that we weren't planning on doing. So that was kind of, you got to be prepared to be flexible. Um, so we had teaching the kids. We had evangelism. We had, we went out into the plaza and into the streets one-on-one -on -one evangelism and praying with people. We saw salvations there. 
that was hard for me too, you know, and then you have the language barrier on top of that, but we always had um, the interpreters and Ben's kids all interpreted for us also. So there was the things that were required on this trip that I had never done were more in front of people speaking and teaching and preaching where the other mission trips I had done before were all hands-on, like painting, working in a kitchen, uh, putting up insulation, <laughs> things like that. This was difficult for me. Um, so I struggled a lot with that. It was really a, a Goliath moment for me of sorts. And I've been in places in my life many times where I felt at the end of myself, like I had nothing to give to this. I, I'm not equipped for this. I can't fix this. Um, I've walked through things with my own children that I couldn't fix. But I have found through those times, and I found through this time on this trip, that that's a hard place to be, but that's a really good place to be because that's when God shows up. And that's when you see him so faithful, and that's where you grow, and that's where he shows that he answers above and beyond what we can even think to pray for. So... um even though I didn't feel qualified and I was scared to death, God showed up. And I remember on Thursday, Thursday was, it, it all hit me on Thursday. I had to do devotions that morning and I had to preach that night. And I was really, I just felt like I was being squeezed. And Sharon and I stopped in her room to pray. And I could tangibly feel God's peace come over me. It's not something, not the kind of peace you can work up or talk yourself into. It was a, almost a tangible thing I felt come on to me. And it, it kept me through the day. It was like God shows you in those moments that his grace really is sufficient. Um, and he is strong in your weaknesses. And God has spoke to me before I even went on this trip. You're not going down in your strengths, because I didn't feel like I had any strengths anyway in this situation. And you're not going down in your weaknesses. You're going down an empty vessel that I will fill. And God proved himself faithful to that. If you had told me I would be up in the mountains preaching to a group of people, I would have just said, no, there's no way that is happening. And those that know me really well know that that is um, hard for me. So I, I did see God move. Uh, we saw God's favor right out of the beginning on the trip. We were in the airport in St. Louis. And because we were flying internationally, and by the way, that's something else. I hate, I hate, hate, hate to fly. And the whole thought of it was terrifying. Flying into a different country made it even worse. But we were standing in a very long line because we had to be, we were flying internationally. And one of the workers came up to us out of nowhere and said, how would you not, how would you like not to have to stand in this line? <laughs> so he took us all aside and he went through all our stuff and got us our passes and we didn't even have to stand in the line. It was just like God's little way of saying, I've got this, I've got you. And we saw his favor through this trip. We saw his strength, divine appointments. We were in the plaza one day and ran into a man who had been searching for someone to connect with spiritually. We got to pray with him and his daughter and their and her, her children. And then he came to Ben's church. So he's made a connection now with Ben. And it was just of all the people that were in that plaza that day, we, we ran into him. So it was just like we saw God's divine appointments. Um, I'm not following this at all. I have no idea where I'm at on this. <laughs> um, ben, Ben's ministry there is, it's, it's a really awesome ministry. There's evangelism taking place. He pastors the church there. He's very much into discipling his people and then church planning everywhere. So he is definitely a high energy guy. <laughs> um, like John said, you don't uh, observe, you participate. Um, but he's doing a wonderful work there. And the night they did the soup kitchen, I'm not sure what they call it, the feeding station, um, they didn't even need our help. We were there to lend a hand, but they have a team there that did everything. And uh, it ran really smoothly. The facility is so nice. The, the stove, everything there is just um, very, very nice, very well equipped, and runs really smoothly. And it, it's a wonderful ministry. Um, something that I've taken away, it's a humbling thing. I felt very humbled through this whole trip, humbled that God would allow me to do it, humbled that God equipped me to do it, and all of us to do it. Um, 
to see the people in the church there that have nothing, the joy that they have there. They minister to you. You, you're, you feel like I'm supposed to be ministering to them, but they really minister to you. And to me, that was a very humbling, humbling experience. So um, thank you again for making it possible for us to do this. I'm thankful to the Lord for, um, for what he did. And um, that's about it. I want you to turn around. Oh. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about our shirts. When we first got into the van, um, right off the get-go, there was three things that he told us that he wanted us to remember, and these are the three things. He would say, uh, Ken Vive, which is who lives, and we'd have to say Cristo, and he'd go through the whole day saying these things, and he expected us to remember to say them again. <laughs> and the next one is, a su nombre is who, whose name which is Gloria. It transfers a little bit different in American, but we still get the kind of the idea. And the last one says La Victoria, and it says um, Asuhijos. It is to his children, and you're supposed to say La Victoria, which is victory. So these are the things when he would holler these things out, he expected us to say these three things, and we'd go through the day. I mean, we'd wake up in the morning, he'd be hollering this stuff and want us to say these things. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> It was a very humbling experience, I have to agree with Terry and John. Um, I wasn't sure that I could make it with my feet and things the way they are, but um, if it wasn't for John, John helping us in the van and after Sharon got her arm hurt, um, I think we got a little bit more personal getting in and out of the van than we all wanted to, but <laughs> but we all made it. We, it was great. Um, when we first got there, we were kind of like what Terry says, in the deficit. We had all been up all night long. We got to the airport at 4 a.m. We were exhausted when we got there. Ben says, let's take um, a tour of the house. So we toured the house, and he said, okay, let's put down your stuff. We're walking to the plaza. Now, we're not talking about around the block. We're talking, what, two city blocks, maybe three, down to the plaza. And then he wants us to walk around the plaza and through the plaza and around these the whole plaza, which is bigger than a square, would be here in the United States. So we get back and we're all exhausted. And it wasn't any better Monday. I mean, we just kept going and going. And finally on Tuesday, that was the that was the picture of John sitting in the chair with his hat to the side. We were saying, "Is it Friday yet?" <laughs> you know, we were we were exhausted. But Wednesday, he gave us a little bit of a break, and I think that really helped. Um, I guess. I'm like, Terry, you know, you have to be ready for change because we weren't really sure what we were doing. Um, but we had to have something planned for those kiddos every day. Um, not just what Sharon had planned, but he wanted a craft. So we don't have a craft ready. So Wednesday, we got all got together and got a craft made. Um, Sharon and Kathy had cut out all the patterns for sewing. He didn't want one day of sewing. He wanted every day of sewing. So they went back to the market, I don't know, three times, I think, and bought more material, and they sat and cut out patterns for all these people. Um, and those ladies had a marvelous time. And the kids did, too. You know, you just do a little something with them. Those children and those families are so loving. Um, they want to know everything about you. You know, they, they want to hug you. Um, they want they want to hold your hand. They want to sing with you. They want to pray with you. Um, I wish we were like that, more like that, you know, more more loving, um, wanting to find out more about God like they are. Um, I have to tell <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm, I'm like Terry, you know, it really stretched me. I'm not one to get up in front of someone and not being a Christian very long. It was really hard for me because I'm thinking, you know, I don't know anything. <laughs> Who am I? I know nothing. But it really did, God had a way of working it out. You know, I did um, the devotion on Tuesday, which I had planned with the help of Andy. And little did I know that I was preaching Tuesday. <laughs> so you go up and you think you're preaching in front of three or four people. And I think there was probably, what, 15 people there. You go to someone's house and you sit out in the yard or you sit in the living room and you preach. You share with them. And then Ben sitting next to you when you're done going, tell them something else. Don't quit. Give him a testimony. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's constantly wanting you to keep going and keep going and keep going. So it really is a stretch. Um, 
but through the grace of God, I think everybody did a great job. Um, we certainly couldn't have done it without all of you and all of your prayers. I have to tell you that um, we are really spoiled. I mean, we don't see it every day, but there's no air conditioning. None. I mean, I think Starbucks had air conditioning when we stopped in there for a second one day to go to the bathroom. You pay to go to the toilet. Okay, I'm going to tell on Terry. <laughs> We go, we go up in the mountains in, in Zacatigas. I think we were going to Zacatigas. And you have to pay to go to the toilet. Six pesos, 35 cents. Okay. So this guy's got a mask on. And, and Terry gives him this money. And he holds out this tissue. And she thinks, oh, my gosh, he don't want to touch my money. So she puts the money there. He takes the money. And he's pushing the tissue at her. It's the toilet paper. <laughs> you have to have toilet paper because there's none in the bathroom. And then you can't flush the toilet paper. So... I don't know about everybody. Well, I do know about everybody else. Um, I think all of us had to fish out the toilet paper at least once, maybe twice, because you can't flush it in Mexico. <laughs> so, I mean, you think about flushing a toilet as like an everyday thing. Um, well, you can't flush the toilet paper in Mexico. So you have to dig out your toilet paper if you drop it. <laughs> but there were, there were a lot of things. I mean, five of us shared one bathroom. Um, his five upstairs shared, shared one bathroom. Um, it was great when you went out, you talked to people, they were friendly, but the people in the churches and on the mountains, they really wanted to get to know God. Um, a lot of them had a close relationship with God. We could tell that how they prayed. You know, you walk into Ben's church Sunday morning and you don't fellowship because they're all at the altar praying. I mean, the kids come in, they walk straight to the altar and pray. The adults walk in, they walk straight to the altar and pray. And then they fellowship. I mean, it was, it was just, it was very different, um, but very nice to see. You know, we almost have to beg people to come to the altar. Andy almost has to beg people to come to the altar. Um, and they just do it willingly. They just walk up to the altar. They have no problem doing that. Um, we prayed. I think Terry and I, the first night, prayed for people. Um, the one lady that I prayed for, her name was Dora. She had just started coming back to church. She had been out of church a while. I didn't know who she was or anything. They were telling me that she had been out of church. And on Thursday, um, Deanna, Ben's wife, came to us. We were sitting around the table and said, by the way, Dora came here. She came to talk to you. She said um, that's the first time she's felt the spirit move in many, many years. And she wanted to know what you prayed about. So I was telling Deanna what we prayed for. And she was supposed to come, try to come back the next morning um, but she had to be there by seven and she was really worried about waking us up <laughs> like we weren't already up. But so I didn't get to see her again, but it was such a blessing to hear that the spirit moved with her just for me praying for her. Um, it's really humbling experience. I mean, I, I think it changed all of us, um, physically, <laughs> uh, mentally, spiritually. Um, if you ever have a chance to go, I, I think you should. Um, like John says, if we can do it, you can do it. I mean, whether you have to have a step stool or two bricks to get in the van, um, that's probably our biggest hurdle other than being mentally and physically and spiritually challenged. Uh, it was great. I think if the kids go, um, they would have a great time. They would be great at ministering to the kids. And I, I don't mean the youth youth. I mean the younger adults. I think they would have an awesome time. And Ben is geared toward that. Um, he says, let's go take a nap, 10 minute nap. Ben takes a 10 minute nap and he's ready to go again. So it, it was a little rough, but I think we all got through it and we did great. And I want to thank John, of course, for helping all of us invalid women, <laughs> but I thank you all. Um, we couldn't have done it without the sponsoring, without the prayers, um, without the encouragement. It, it was a great time. It really was, um, exhausting, but it was a great time. This was a very challenging time for me as well, um, but overall, <laughs> I was more blessed than I ever thought I'd be. This is a childhood memory for me from long ago that I'm just going to share a little bit of that this lady that um, 
that my mother always went to to get her hair done. She was from Mexico. And as a kid, you know, you think, oh, wow, I'd like to go there sometime, you know. But she brought me back a box, a wooden box that had engraving on it. And that really touched me as a kid to think that she would have enough enough empathy and enough just to think of me. And um, I can't thank you all for your prayers, for your financial support, and a lot of your prayers. I mean, I know that, that a lot of people were praying for us. Um, I got to um, meet a lady on the airplane. Her name was Ava. And uh, I don't remember which airplane. <laughs> and the first day, the first night that we got there, I didn't go to the whatever they went to. But they brought me back tacos. <laughs> I got a funny story. I thought it was guacamole I was putting on my taco. <laughs> Don't trust green stuff when you're in Mexico because it was hot. <laughs> but Miss Ava was going home. She was originally from uh, uh, Zacatayas, and her father had passed, I mean, her grandfather had passed away, and he was 102 years old. And I got to pray for her and for her family for comfort. And that was just a really, <clears throat> really good blessing to be able to share the gospel with her and to be able to help her family, you know, try to, uh, you know, just get through this time. Um, my time, uh, I helped with the aprons and I also got to to tell a little bit of my testimony to a small group of ladies. Like, like they already said, um, we each did devotions each morning, and I don't call it preaching because I'm not a preacher. Uh, I taught, and uh, the, um, the aprons, <laughs> the first night we did them, it was just, those ladies were just hilarious. It was just so much fun, and it was just amazing. And um, oh, some of the houses are like stucco homes. Like we we used to live in Oklahoma for a couple of years, and the houses were made of stucco. Well, it's like I don't know what it is. I don't know, <laughs> but it's I guess it's just what they have on hand, you know, to build with is how, because it was in the panhandle. We weren't very far from Texas. But, uh, and it amazed me that these people, even though they didn't have much, that most of their homes were two rooms. They would have up to three beds sometimes in that one little room. Three, three beds. Now, we are spoiled. I've got two bedrooms, and one of them's full of junk. <laughs> and I'm like, God, I am so blessed. But you know, look at look at how these people live, and they are so they're so happy, they're so content. And um, so uh, the housing was really something. And I learned that a camper top can be used <laughs> for covering the chickens or the rabbits or whatever animals you might have that the hawks might get to. <laughs> there was a lot of that up there. And the rocks were like the property lines that I thought, that is just so cool. <laughs> oh, why, did they, why did they just stack these rocks up, you know, with nothing holding them together? They're stacked up. And... Uh, so uh, they also said it was open range sometimes. Well, of course, you saw the cattle coming down. Well, there was some horses that was through there, too. <laughs> and um, something about that, too, is the women usually take the cattle from place to place to graze if they've got a lot of acreage 
because the men would be working in the silver mines. So they, they had a lot of silver there. So uh, that's most of their culture, I think, there. Um, I gave my testimony, and that was, that was awesome that I could share that. And um, it was just good to love on these people, to pray with these people. You know, there's a language barrier, but you can show love just with a smile, just with a, a hug. That This woman didn't know what I was praying, but she laid her head on my shoulder. And that took my breath away. Because even though she didn't know what I was praying for her for, and I didn't know, but I, I said, Lord, you know what she needs. And then later on, I found out that she was in a lot of pain. So I do think the Holy Spirit just comes in and takes over. He really does. And we got to be aware of that and tap into that. <clears throat> and the mountains were just beautiful. But uh, <laughs> John kept asking me, have you always wanted to come to Mexico? Have you been to Mexico? <laughs> but Zacatecas is very big. Um, I wouldn't like staying there, but I'm a country girl. I don't like close places. <laughs> but it was awesome just to see these people. Just And um, just they loved on us like we were neighbors. And we are. We're all neighbors of Christ. And we're all sisters and brothers in Christ. And that's what it's all about. Hello, everyone. I couldn't put my shirt on this evening. I think you probably can see why. So I'm just hanging it on my shoulder. But I am a senior of 2022 as well. I want to thank all of you for your support. I know that's been said several times, but I can't tell you how amazing this trip was. Just amazing. I want to thank Melody, because the first time I ever met Ben, or the first night that he ever spoke was on a Wednesday night, he was standing up here talking about how he would like to send some people, or bring some people, or have people come. I was sitting right behind her, about where she is now, and I'm sitting there, oh Lord, I want to go. I want to go teach those children. I want to go. I just want to experience that. I just feel that in my heart. She turned around and looked at me and she said, you want to go, don't you? I said, um, yes. She said, then you need to go. And I thought, no one told her but God. And I was sitting there praying, Lord, I need a confirmation. Uh, that was my confirmation. As it was the first year, I was not going to be going because it wasn't time yet. So when this opportunity arose, um, I was able to receive support from you, and I appreciate that so much, and I appreciate my sponsors, too, for giving me what they gave me to be able to go on this trip. We started out where we were on the plane. <laughs> my one concern is that I would not get sick because that's happened before. No problem. It was a wonderful, tri it was a wonderful trip. Plane ride was great. We get into Zacatecas, and then it hit me. Oh, um, I'm in a different culture. Uh, they're trying to talk to me about something, and I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know what they're asking me, but um, I need some help here. And there were a few people around that came to my rescue and came to our rescue and interpreted for us what they needed. We signed some papers, and then we were in. And waiting for Ben, we got in the van. We headed down the road, probably about, it felt like 100 miles an hour, because that's the way Ben drives. <laughs> but we get there quicker, right? <laughs> so we get there to where our destination is. But before we get there, um, this is an awakening, too. Um, we see soldiers. 
and we see them in trucks, and we see them with their weapons and in their garb. And I'm taken aback, and it caught me off guard. And Ben said, what we do is we pray for the soldiers as we go. And we pray for their families before we get to the checking point, and we pray that we get a green light so that we don't have to stop and that we don't have to give much explanation. So, um, okay, we're all praying in the van, and they give us the green light. And he said, look at it like this. It is for your protection. That's why they're there. It's not to cause harm to anyone, but it's to protect us. But it was very different because we don't see that here. We don't see any of that here at all. And um, that was another awakening to me. I thought, wow, that's just really different, but I'm in a different country. We'll go with it. So we get to the house, and they've explained kind of what we did that afternoon. We went out on the square and we walked around looking at buildings, beautiful, beautiful buildings. I, I, I was so amazed at the structure. Old, old uh, buildings, uh, theaters from like the 1800s, things like that. So we get back and we're all preparing for Sunday morning. It's exciting. We go to church and Amy and I got to give our testimonies that morning, which was great. It was exciting. Like she said, that there's a lot of prayer that goes on before the church services. Um, and the worship is very different as well. They worship, and they worship, and they worship some more, and they continue to worship. Worship was a long, beautiful time in the presence of God. It was amazing. There was no stopping until the Spirit of God said, stop. He just kept worshiping and worshiping. And then what we did was we gathered around the whole church. We held hands everyone, and we all prayed. We just prayed. Whoever wanted to pray, prayed. This is a Sunday morning, so it's very different there. And we prayed, and we prayed, and then we we broke out, and I took the kids downstairs, and the rest of the service took place. That morning, I spoke on Adam and Eve, and a little boy who was seven years old named Kevin um, raised his hand to give his life to Jesus Christ, which was so precious. Um, he's there in front of all of his 25 friends, but he wasn't hindered in any way whatsoever. And he came up, and there was an interpreter, and she interpreted for my prayer, and he said, yes, yes, I do. I want to I want to receive Jesus. And so we prayed, and he accepted the Lord. And I thought, wow, this is just so amazing that we have such a great start to this time. Sunday night, we went back, and I think John was with the men, and then Kathy and I were with the women. We were doing sewing, teaching them how to slip stitch and all kinds of things, and every time they had a success, what they were doing, we'd throw our stuff in the air and say, woo, and they would start saying that too. They were just full of joy. They were so happy we were there sharing with them. They were so happy that we were teaching them, and they were just so joyous. We hugged on them, we loved on them, and they loved on us. There was no barrier because Jesus Christ was there. There there was no barrier. Jesus was so powerful there. Uh, we just, uh, it was like we had known each other for many, many years. We, uh, and there were times where I tried to talk to these ladies, and I learned a le- excelente, <laughs> uh, hola, <laughs> gracias, <laughs> and, well, the other word was el baño, but that means bathroom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, it was, it was, it was exciting because I didn't even need to know a lot of Mexican vocabulary. I didn't need to know Spanish. I didn't need that because charades was enough. And all I had to do is kind of express myself a little bit. And they understood what I was saying for the most part. And when I got stuck, I'd just call on Deanna or Shalom to come help me out. And they were there. So that was Sunday night. Monday morning, we went out on the square again. We took tracks out and we were ministering. and, And it was a beautiful time. And And then it happened. And I was in the square. And I was following Deanna. We were partners going out ministering. And I followed her into a section where there was a cement block here and a cement block there. And there's about 18 inches between. 
and I put my right foot in the middle, and my left toe caught the corner. I went down on my knees, then on my elbows, and as I was getting ready to land on my face, my head went back, and because that's, it was just in an instant, and my whole self was caught in there except for this shoulder, and it hit the cement block, and it popped it right out of position, and it dislocated. I knew it when it happened, and I said, I know I'm not okay, I'm not okay, and Deanna and all these men came running, and they helped me get up and got me into onto the bench, but I'm going to tell you something that was very amazing that happened. It was God. It was so amazing. I don't take credit for this. I don't, because this is not something that a person typically does when they're in a situation like this. But I want to tell you that before I left on this trip, I prayed, and I know we all did, but I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, God, you have your way. You do what you want in my life. You do what you want in all of our lives. This is for your glory. This is not for ours. You do what you need for us to do for these people. As I'm sitting there on the bench, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God came down on me. The presence of God was so powerful. I didn't, at that moment, I don't even believe I felt pain. I bowed my head and I started praying and praying and praying. As I was praying, I felt the presence of God was so powerful all around me, in the square, all over me. And I, I, as long as I was praying, I felt comforted and I felt peace and I felt strong in the Lord and I felt so much like my Jesus was right beside me. And I just prayed and prayed. The peace of God just covered me. It covered me. You can't make this stuff up. It was God. He met me right there at that moment. And as I, as I was finishing up my prayer, as I was finished, I was like, okay, I'm finished. I'm ready to go to the doctor. And Deanna, and I think Amy was there, Deanna held my arm three blocks. We walked three blocks to the orthopedic doctor. And got there, and he did an x-ray, and he said, I need you at the hospital. And I'm thinking, Lord Jesus, I know you're in control. This is not what I came for. I didn't come for a problem, but I know that you've got this. So whatever you want to do. We get to the hospital, and I'm very thankful that Terry and John were with me because their in-law is Micah, and he's my physician. And they were able to communicate with him the proper medications they could give me to numb my arm. And they did. And the orthopedic man came in, and he twisted, and he turned, and he twisted it, and he turned. And the whole time, I'm really literally thinking, I hope he doesn't get my arm in backwards, because then I'll really have a problem. (laughs) I'm literally thinking this. I'm like, God, really take over, okay? (laughs) And Ben was standing by my side. Actually, he was holding my hand. And when they were finished, uh, they came in, and they did an x-ray. He said, no chips, no fractures, no surgeries needed everything's okay. You need this for three weeks, Micah said four, so I still have this on one more week. But he said, everything will be just fine. It will heal. Um, You'll need some physical therapy, but you'll be okay. Praise God. Praise God. That's all I could say was praise God. You took care of me. You took it all. You took care of me. Thank you, Jesus, because you are so good to me. I'm telling you, the only other time I felt peace like that was when my husband had passed away. It was just covered, covered in grace and peace. And I just thank the Lord for that strength. Well, that night, Ben told me, he goes, Sharon, we were all sitting at the table. He goes, you're homebound for three days. I said, oh, oh no, no, I'm not homebound for three days. Ben, I can't do that. Yes, you are. No, no, you can't put me at home for three days. I I can't do that. I didn't come to Mexico to be homebound for three days. I will be fine. I'll be okay. He said, well, let's see how you are in the morning. At the crack of dawn, heard the roosters in the city. You hear roosters in the city. I'm up. I'm getting dressed. I'm ready to go. I only miss the soup kitchen Monday night after the fall. The rest of the time, the grace of God, almighty God, gave me strength I had three hours sleep a night, I think. Some of us did. And I didn't feel it. I didn't feel weary. I I might have felt a little tired, but not weary and strung out. It was the grace of God because there was a mission. There was something God wanted to do. 
to continue on, I'll just tell you that um, through that whole process, God uh, just did mighty things. Um, we did go to a little village then that next day. Um, we got I got to teach the children, taught them about Moses, and one little child raised their hand to accept Jesus Christ as a Savior. Um, then on Wednesday morning, we got up and we were preparing then to, um, we went out, um, to the place where they were going to handle and carry the daily vacation Bible school. And we prayed over that area. Then we went out to the park. That's where Terry and I met the lady in the park. And we were out giving tracts on vacation Bible school and about the church. And she accepted Jesus Christ as her savior. We got to lead her to the Lord. Shalom was with us. She was interpreting. So there were so many things that God continued to do. And then Wednesday night, I got to preach. I got to go to the mountains, and I got to preach. I got to share my testimony. And during my testimony, I talked about the death of my father, which was extremely unexpected, and how the Lord and his divine providence had me ready to go home when my mother had called me. And uh, talking about my testimony as being in Catholicism and how God had taken and saved my father in spite of that, uh, that he didn't he didn't know the Lord up until the end of his life, and sharing those types of things. At the end of service, there was a lady who had been weeping most of the service, and I said to Deanna, I said, can we go pray with her? And she said, yes. And I uh, went over and I said, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? And she said, I lost my father four months ago. And so at that moment, we cried together and we prayed together. And in my message, I talked about the first suddenly of when the disciples were in the boat and they were afraid and they were scared and they were in torment and and then the second suddenly is where Jesus calmed the sea and calmed the storm. And don't stay in the first suddenly, but move into the second suddenly, where you know that Jesus has got it. And Jesus is the one that's your comforter, and Jesus is your strength. And through that time, praying with her and sharing with her, she received that well. And it's just like like everyone has been saying, we were so bonded together, just being together as sisters. They fed us. They fed us after every time we ministered. We were so full. We were as full as ticks. We ate and we ate and we ate some more. These people were so kind. The ladies were so loving. They were sharing and caring. Thursday, well, actually Wednesday night, uh, Deanna told me, she said, Sharon, and I know it's going to be a rough time for you to go to the mountains way, way up two and a half hours at the top. So you can stay with Hadassah, which was their daughter, and myself and her two friends. And I said, um, Deanna, I really want to go to the mountains. She said, well, Sharon, um, it, I know it's a bumpy ride. I know it's really tough. And, I, and she says, I know you could probably do that. That's fine. She says, I said, no, 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 I really want to go to the mountains. There's more to be done. I just felt it in my spirit. There's more to be done, more to see. And so she said, well, you don't have to make that decision tonight. I said, okay, tomorrow morning. So I, in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock, um, I was swollen, and I was hurting. I went, got a nice pack, put it on my arm, woke, went to sleep for two hours, and woke up the next morning, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, it was his voice so clearly, he said, you're going to the mountains. And I said, yes, Lord. And I had this surge of strength and energy. And I said, yes, it was 5 o'clock. I got up at 5.30. I was ready to go by about 6 o'clock, 6.30. And I'm, I'm going to the mountains. So Deanna helped me get ready. And she goes, okay, took two pillows. God was just there the whole time. Ministered to children. They raised their hands for salvation. Ministered again when we got to uh, the second place in the village. Um, Children raised their hands again, and one young girl especially, she was sincere about her decision, and that was a blessing as well. The third time, the third place we were in, in one of the villages at the on Thursday up in the mountains, the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God was so powerful, it fell, and Ben said, I want each one of you to go around and start praying for all these people. And we went and prayed for all the people in the sanctuary, all the people that were there. We prayed for them. We wept with them. We cried with them. We shared with them. And there was no barrier. We uh, 
we were able to um, share uh, just uh, that we love them so much. Um, so through it all, we got to the mountains, we got down, we got back, and the Lord's grace and mercy was, like I said, so powerful on each one of us. We really didn't sleep a lot. We didn't rest too well. We were not in our home, but, you know, um, we learned that you don't have to have a lot. You don't have to live in beautiful, big homes. It's okay if you do. But the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God was so powerful amongst all these people who didn't have a lot. Their love for us was unending. They just embraced us. We embraced them like we'd known them for years. Friends, sisters and brothers in Christ. Um, I also want to say that on the way to the mountains, and I'll make it brief because I know, Andy, we're probably coming up on time. Am I right? There, these people, a lot of them are steeped in Catholicism. Nothing like we see in the United States of America. In the United States, I, of course, I was brought up in the Catholic Church, and I, I've still walked into a Catholic Church. I've been there, and nothing like this. There are shrines on the side of the road that they worship. There are saints on the side of the road that they make statues and they worship. You literally see it out in the open that they worship these things. There's such a need for the breaking of the deception of the enemy. Um, it's something I hadn't seen that in my face. Like um, the Americas, it's not like that, but they're, they're definitely into those uh, things of idolatry. And so such a burden on my heart for that. But through that whole process, um, I learned a lot about the need that is there. And if there are groups that go back, um, there is a need. And they'll be welcomed, too, just the same as we were, were blessed. And uh, I take away from all of this that God, it doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter, doesn't matter how it looks, but when God's in it, it's going to get accomplished because that's who he is. He is God, he is faithful, and he is Lord, and he is just. And uh, when you cry out to your heavenly father, um, he's there. And so I praise God for um, my group and my team who helped me get through some of these little rough bumps because uh, needed some help along the way. And uh, I want to thank you again for support because uh, this is this is a trip that changed my life. Um, don't look at things the same in America, but we know that there's a great need. That's why we're here Monday nights. That's why we pray for our country. That's why we pray for the world. That's why we pray for our nation and that it would come back to the Lord and that God would do a mighty work. And um, so anyway, thank you so much again, and I appreciate uh, all of you, and uh, God bless you. Hey, uh, real quick, I just want to share um, two things. But uh, the highlight for me on this trip was on Wednesday. Um, there's a young man named Stephen Price from Marion, Illinois. And I've, I've known Stephen since he was 15. He got into our men's group. We still meet. In fact, we'll meet tomorrow. But uh, Stephen is 37, 38. But he's in Zacatecas City as a, as a missionary. Uh, long story short, he lost my number. I lost his. But it worked out. And we got contact, and he actually came and spent Wednesday with us and went up to the mountains and, and shared. But the, the, the thing about, it, to me, the highlight was when Stephen and Ben got together. Because they're walking something we don't understand. We're there for a week, and, you know, we're... But these guys have given their life to be down there, family. And you could just see a connection between these two guys that... And they were speaking in Spanish. I finally said, I won't take a shower, you know. But you, you just knew that it was God thing, that they were just building each other up and being able to share with each other. And that was just really uh, to see that because, I mean, we went down there and we experienced, but, you know, my heart was go down there and be a, be a blessing to them. And uh, uh, so I don't know what that's going to do with Stephen and Ben, but they they that was really a powerful thing. So anyhow, we got a couple things here uh, that was – that was given to our pastor and his wife, and uh, Andy and Stephanie. If you, Stephanie, if you like it, I have something to do with. If you don't, <laughs> you know. 
And Andy, this is from Ben and Deanna too, so come, come on up. Oh, by the way, <laughs> Andy would work real well down there in Mexico because he drives like they do down there. <laughs> Everything's a suggestion down there. So uh, this, is, this is your wife, correct? Yes. Yeah, we open this right here? Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I said, "Well, I need a suit man on Sunday," but I said, "We'll." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Flip flops and a shirt. So. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You can work yourself into it. Yeah, thanks again. Thanks for all your prayers. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They did a, hey, give them a big round of applause because I, uh, I'm proud of you. I really am. That was a big week and you guys did good. And I just, I'm very, very proud of you. So you guys got a lot to be proud of. I took them up there on, on what was that? A Friday? And they looked great. The Saturday when I picked them back up, I could tell they had been with each other just a little bit too long, and they were just flat out washed. But you guys, I really, I can't tell how, how you, I can't tell how proud I am of me and how impressed I am. And, um, I said, will you go again? And they all said yes, but probably not for a little while. Uh, but anyway, you guys are awesome. Everybody good? Amen. Continue to pray for Ben and his ministry. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Ben, just real quick. Several years ago, he came here on a Wednesday night, and we were talking about building a building. Or no, we were worried about building a gym at the time. And he was meeting under a big tree. And I thought, man, how spoiled are we? And um, I, that night I washed his feet in here. And the Bible says how beautiful are the feet of those who go and preach the good news of Jesus. And um, ever since then, I fell in love with him and his ministry, and he's done a great work. And I'm glad that we can partner with him and help him. And we, we give to him monthly. We give to his food bank monthly. Um, there's several of you. We, we've helped build half that church, and I'm proud that we can be involved in that. All glory goes to God, and I hope for many years that we can continue to partner uh, with Ben and the crew down there. All right. Amen. Been a good night in the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this team who went down there. How awesome. Thank you for their sweet testimonies. Thank you, God, for all that you did and, and your protection over them. And Lord, we continue to pray for Brother Ben and that church down there. We pray, Lord, that you continue to grow it and prosper it. And Lord, we just pray they see more and more people come to know you as their personal Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we all said, Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed. <laughs>